The Miraculous Journey of Edward Tulane, Chapter 13. They traveled on foot. They traveled in empty rail cars. They were always on the move. But in truth, said Bull, we are going nowhere. That, my friend, is the irony of our constant movement. Edward rode in Bull's bedroll, slung over Bull's shoulder with only his head and ear sticking out. Bull was, not, uh, was, was always careful to position the rabbit so that he was not looking down or up, but was instead forever looking behind him at the road they had just traveled. At night, they slept on the ground under the stars. Lucy, after her initial disappointment about Edward being unfit for consumption, took a liking to him and slept curled up beside him. Sometimes she even rested her muzzle on his china stomach. And then the noises she made in her sleep, whimpering and growling and shuffling and resonating inside Edward's body, oh, resonated inside Edward's body. To his surprise, he began to feel a deep tenderness for the dog. During the night, while Bull and Lucy slept, Edward, with his ever-open eyes, stared up at the constellations. He said their names, and then he said the names of the people who loved him. He started with Abilene, and then went to Nellie and Lawrence, and from there to Bull and Lucy. And when he ended with Abilene, I'm oh, sorry, and then he ended again with Abilene. Abilene, Nellie, Lawrence, Bull, Lucy, Abilene. See, Edward told Pellegrina, I am not like the princess. I know about love. There were times, too, when Bull and Lucy gathered around a campfire with other tramps. Bull was a good storyteller and an even better singer. Sing for us, Bull, the men shouted. Bull sat with Lucy leaning against his leg and Edward balanced on his right knee. And he sang from somewhere deep inside himself. Just as Edward could feel Lucy's whimpers and growls resonate through his body at night, he could also feel the deep, sad sound of Bull's songs move through him. Edward loved it when Bull sang. And he was grateful to Bull, too, for sensing that a dress was not the right kind of clothing for Edward. Malone, said Bull one night, it's not my desire to offend you or to comment negatively on your choice of garb, but I'm forced to tell you that you stick out like a sore thumb in that princess dress. And also, again, with no wish to offend you, the dress has seen better days. Nellie's beautiful dress had not fared well at the dump or in its subsequent ramblings with Bull and Lucy. It was so torn and dirty and full of holes that it barely resembled a dress anymore. I have a solution, said Bull, and I hope that it meets you with your approval. He took his own knit stocking cap and cut a big hole in the top of it and two small holes on the side of it. And then he took off Edward's dress. Look away, Lucy, he said to the dog. Let's not embarrass Malone by staring at his nakedness. Bull slid the hat over Edward's head and pulled it down and poked his arms through the smaller holes. There you go, he said to Edward. Now you just need some pants. The pants Bull made himself cutting up several red handkerchiefs and sewing them together so that they formed a makeshift covering for Edward's long legs. Now you have the proper outlaw look, said Bull, standing back to admire his work. Now you look like a rabbit on the run. And that is the end of chapter 13.